Hello, I'm Gemma, and over the last few months I've been sharing with you some of the stories we tell at the Museum of Norwich at the Bridewell, which is in the heart of the Norwich Lanes. And here, life in Norwich is told through the eyes of the people who have grown up, lived and worked in the city. Now today, we're looking at the different lives of two girls who lived here in Norwich 100 years ago, Ethel and Elfrida. Now Ethel was the last and 17th child born to Albert and Eleanor Edwards. She grew up in one of the poorer areas of the city. Alfreda, however, she was the only child of Sydney and Grace Long, and by contrast was born in a grand house in the city centre and lived a life of wealth and privilege. Now you probably have hundreds of family photos, but when Ethel and Elfrida were growing up, families didn't own their own cameras, and so would either ask a photographer to come to their home, or they in turn would visit a studio. Now in Norwich at the time, we know that there were over 100 photographers trading from the city. Elfrida kept a diary, or rather a scrapbook, containing not only photos, but also letters, drawings and clippings from newspapers. The words are by her mother, but written as if by Elfrida herself, starting from the day she was born. Now Elfrida, she was growing up during an eventful time in history. The diary covers the impact of the First World War on the family, and also recorded is the tragic sinking of the Titanic, and locally, the terrible Norwich floods of 1912. Elfrida's father, Sidney Long, was a surgeon at the Norfolk and Norwich Hospital, where Elfrida became a frequent visitor, recording this account in March 1915. Afternoon, Daddy took me to see the wounded soldiers in the new building, Eastern Daily Press Ward, and in the tents at the hospital. Some of the soldiers, a hundred, arrived yesterday from the Battle of Nerve Chapelle. Some showed me tattoo marks on their arms. It was snowing hard and there was about three inches of snow on the ground. After we had finished seeing the soldiers, we played snowball in the hospital gardens and again in Chapelfield Gardens on our way home. The First World War is a prominent and looming presence in the pages of Elfrida's diary. There are many press cuttings and also accounts of how her family were helping with the war effort. Meanwhile, two days before Christmas in 1914, just six months into the First World War, Ethel was born near Barrack Street. She spent her childhood in the shadow of the huge Pockthorpe Brewery building. Living conditions for the poorest people in Norwich could be extremely harsh at this time, and for Ethel, as the youngest of 17 children, rather cramped. Ethel and her family, however, lived in little more comfort than most. They had a flushing toilet, for example, but it was still four or five children to a bedroom. With so many children and such little space in the house, just having a bath was a complicated operation. Here's Ethel in later life recalling what it was like. Mother used to put us girls in this bath. That used to be like a round uh, metal thing. And, and a hand, a wooden hand, and she used to scoop it in. And, uh, and sometimes she'd scoop it in a bowl and then tip it in the bar. And uh, I think the girls, we all washed in the same water, but I was always treated well. I had to be bath first. <laughs> we used to be like it lobsters when we come out, you know, because of the sort of water, mind you, I think that, I don't think that did us any harm, because we all looked rosy and, and clean, you know. <laughs> and, as there wasn't much space inside, Ethel remembers how they would play outside in all weathers as much as they could. She played marbles with a whip and top and chalked on the pavement. She also recalls days spent out on Mousehold Heath, just around the corner from her. But one of the highlights of Ethel's childhood was going to the cinema. And thanks to the clear descriptive memories of Ethel, we've recreated a little cinema in one of our galleries. Ethel describes going to the cinema as rather chaotic. She says, before the picture started, the kids used to throw stuff at each other. In one city cinema, you could even pay for a ticket with a jam jar or a rabbit skin if you didn't have enough money. Ethel left school aged 14, and like many girls her age, went straight to work in one of Norwich's boot and shoe factories. She lived to 99 years of age. And so what became of Elfrida, whose life growing up in Norwich at around the same time was so different to Ethel's? Well, her diary ends in 1922, with this photo and these poignant words. With the ground deeply covered by snow, and on a rough tempestuous day, I left home in the afternoon for my new school at West Runton, kept by Miss Vernon Harcourt. 
We drove over in the rover car and there Daddy and Mummy left me. Elfrida lived with her mother in Norwich until after the Second World War, when she eventually married and moved to Lincolnshire. Both Elfrida and Ethel lived through troubled times, but it's thanks to others who documented their remarkable lives that we now get a glimpse into their world. What do you have and keep that might interest people a hundred years from now?